We begin with the girls leaving the mall. They all got jobs at Wizendale's, the hottest store in town. Thanks to La Cienega, who's dating Wizard Kelly's son. They all want to go celebrate, but La Cienega has a date with Lil Wizard Jr. He picks her up in a limo. The girls try to ask for a ride, but he pulls off on them. Back at home, Oscar has a new camera he's obsessed with. He's annoying everyone in the family, and he's proud of that. Sugar Mama kicks him in the chest for filming her, which is a valid response. Penny comes in and asks Oscar for some money, and he tells her that because she got a job now, he gonna need that back. Sugar Mama ends up just socking him out. Wizendales is popping and Dijanae is dancing instead of working. This is before TikTok, so she's just doing it for the love of not working. I feel her. She tries harassing Sticky, which is not how you make sales. The department manager, Randy, walks up and starts flirting with him, and that's how you make sales. She tells the girls they need to get their game up if they want to start making some real paper. Penny tries applying this advice on this frail dude. Zoe tries it on this sturdy dude. Just giving one single compliment to a man is the real key to sales. They notice Penny's parents walking up. Randy starts talking to Oscar and he's ready to risk it all for this button up. Trudy starts hating. Randy then flips the game by saying Trudy looks 25 and she's putting up wilt numbers. Penny asks what they're doing here and Oscar says that he's trying to buy something but her mom is clothes blocking. Oscar then has Penny stand just close enough to Randy that he can record them and crop her out. Lil Wiz walks up with La Cienega and he's here to to try out some watches. He wants to get the special girl in his life a little sum sum. Oscar is over here creep recording Randy before he catches a glimpse of Sugar Mama with the cakes out. This shatters his ocular receptors. The family goes to the petting zoo. Oscar must be trying to build a lawsuit because he gets attacked by all the animals. First, the goat thinks he's a tin can and tries to eat him. Then the elephant remembers when Oscar was a kid and used to shoot water guns at old Jumbo. You, you know what they say, elephants don't forget or something. Jumbo blasts Oscar across the zoo into the alligator pit, or maybe crocodiles, I'm not from Florida. Sugar Mama is the greatest world star filmer ever and she don't take the lens off the action. Oscar goes up to a silverback gorilla and feeds him some prowl snacks. Them shits are trash, so the gorilla just dog walks Oscar. The girls are back at Wizendale's and they're cheering about how amazing working is. They're still young and aren't jaded by years of retail work yet. Randy strolls in and sees the platinum chronometer is missing. She surveys the group to see who sold the watch. Nobody fesses up. If Randy didn't sell the watch and y'all didn't sell it, then who sold it? Penny don't know. Eh, wrong answer, forehead. Randy puts the whole store on lockdown. The thieves are walking home and they're sad they got fired. Well, everyone but La Cienega. Zoe says they should have flattened her tires. La Cienega reminds them that they're friends with very powerful people. She'll get Lil Wiz to hire them back. That is, as soon as they get the watch back. Come on, y'all can't expect Randy to hire felons. Penny does her best Encyclopedia Brown and tries piecing everything together. The only people who were near the case were Little Wiz and La Cienega. Penny now tries to blame Little Wizard Jr. Zoe points out that he owns every watch ever, his dad owns the store, and he got mad paper stacks and could easily buy that watch. Penny doesn't consider this logic for even a second. They all press La Cienega and she says that if she baselessly accuses him of something that he clearly didn't do, she's gonna lose all her benefits, which valid point. Her girls give her an ultimatum. Little Wiz or them. She picks the non-klepto and runs out before they try to run her pockets. Back at home, the doctor is committing malpractice on Oscar. Penny gets back and tells everyone about how she got fired on her day off like Craig. Sugar Mama is mad as hell that someone would dare treat Penny like this. She's gonna get to the bottom of this. They head to Wizard Kelly's house and it's on top of the entire Hollywood Hills. They gotta hike all through Runyon Canyon just to get to the front door. Sugar's bunions are screaming at her. Penny gotta carry Sugar Mama, which is impressive to do as a 14 year old. Old. Sugar Mama flexes her way into Wizard Kelly's house and he offers them some Salisbury steak. She demands to see Lil Wizzy. That little bastard is a thief and Penny and her friends got blamed for his chicanery. Wizard does not know what the hell she's talking about, so he gets a dictionary before they go in front Baby Wiz. They bust in on them watching Blackula, and Penny starts accusing Lil Wiz in his own house, takes his watch right off his wrist. Wizard reminds them that while they were accusing, they should have been perusing. They missed that fat engraving that says his name, his birth date, you know, uh, the hospital he was born in, how much he weighed. 
all his personal information. For that, everyone gets Jazzy Jeff out the house. Penny is still delusional and wants to blame Poquito Wiz. Sugar Mama says she sees more of Oscar in her every single day. Back at home, they're playing some home videos and they come across Oscar taking non-consensual creep shots of Randy. Luckily, his perversions also caught BB and Cece getting their Winona Ryder on. Sugar Mama suggests changing their name to Bonnie and Clyde. They go upstairs and these kids are scandalous. They not only stole that watch, but they stole the whole damn zoo? That's just bad parenting at this point. The next day, the girls go to Wizendale's and return the watch and think they're just gonna get their jobs back. Be glad y'all get a trespassing charge for being in this store. Plus, they've been replaced by the Gross Sisters Ashy Crew, and while it is foul that y'all are coloring the dark-skinned girls blue, it, they, they got a job and a rich man, so who's really winning? I just found out in the credits that Ashanti was Randy, and damn it, it all makes sense now.